Now we're going to learn how to do operations on and composition of functions. Doing function operations is really the same thing that we've talked about before. We're just learning the notation. So back in earlier math classes, you learned about function notation, where you would have things like f of x. And now we're going to combine different functions, like we might be adding f of x plus g of x. And sometimes we put the plus in between, and sometimes we put it with the f and g in the first parentheses with the plus. And we do the same thing with all the different operations. So these are different ways you might see it. But they all just mean the same thing. So if I have f of x is 5x and g of x is x plus 2, then for addition, I'm going to do 5x plus x plus 2. And in this case, I can combine like terms. So that would give me 6x plus 2. Me putting parentheses here is important for when I am doing things like subtraction. So I might have 5x minus x plus 2. And so I need to distribute that negative. So that would be 5x minus x minus 2, which is going to give me 4x minus 2. And notice if I had done g of x minus h of x, or g of x minus f of x, that's going to give me a different answer. So order matters for um, subtraction and division. <coughs> now for multiplication, it would just be 5x times x plus 2. I can simplify that by distributing. And then division, I would have f over g, but remember from last semester, we can't have a 0 in the denominator, so x cannot equal negative 2, because that would make the denominator equal to 0. So here are a couple examples, and they can also do ones where um, it might say f plus g of 2 or something like that is also a possibility. So what this one is telling me to add my two functions, and I'm going to play it safe by putting parentheses. I don't really need parentheses for when I'm doing addition, but it's important for subtraction. So x squared plus 3x minus 5 plus 2x squared plus x plus 9, and combine like terms. So 3x squared plus 4x plus 4. Subtracting, order matters, so it's telling me to do f first. So when I do that, it's going to change my signs for the second parentheses. Minus 2x squared minus x plus nine. So I get negative x squared plus two x plus four. Let's see how that changes if I switch the order of the functions. Two x squared plus x minus nine distribute negative x squared, negative 3x, positive 5. So x squared minus 2x minus 4. Now multiplication, um, to save time in the video, I'm just going to do a little bit of it. So if we are multiplying these two functions, that's where we're going to have a 3 by 3 box. x squared, 3x minus 5, and 2x squared plus x minus 9. So pause the video and finish that multiplication. f of x is x squared plus 3x minus 5 over 2x squared plus whoops, x minus 9. And we don't want the denominator equal to 0. Um, I don't immediately see something that factors with this, so we're going to move on with our life. Um, and I'm not going to give you something crazy in the denominator if I'm wanting you to make sure that 
there's nothing that will make it equal to zero. And x squared plus 3x minus 5. Okay, so I want to take one second to look back up at the top and talk about if it said um, something with a number. So I'm just going to take this first example and I'm going to write it in red. <coughs> Say it had said, what is f plus g of 2? I could either plug 2 in to my original, so that would give me 10 and 4, which would be 14. Or I could plug it in once I've already combined them and get 6 times 2 plus 2, which is also 14. So when it is asking you to evaluate for a number, it doesn't matter whether I do it at the beginning or I combine the functions and do it at the end. Now we're going to do something called a composition of functions. So a composition of function is read or written as f of g of x. So you literally have one of the functions, in this case g of x, is plugged into the other function f. <coughs> and the notation for this can be really easily confused with multiplication. Multiplication has a filled in circle and composition has an open. It's kind of like fog. So you want to be paying attention because those are going to mean two totally different things. So we're going to look at this from a few different perspectives. And we're going to start with tables and mapping diagrams and just review those really quick um, to see what we remember about those before we move on. So when I look at this first one, you want to look at your inside function. So my inside function is g of 9. So that's where I'm going to look at g and I'm going to find where 9 is in my table. So what do I get when I have a value of 9 in g? I get out negative 1. So I have f of g of 9 is negative 1. And now I'm going to look in f. What do I see when I have negative 1? Where is your arrow going? It's going to negative 4. So let's try that again. I'm going to go down. g of negative 1. 4. What is g of negative 4? That's 8. So now I look at my f of x, and what is f of 8? I don't see an 8. Do you see an 8? Nope. So we're going to go with no solution. Okay. Looking at the next one, we still have g on the inside. <coughs> so g of 15 is 0. So this would be f of 0. And 0 takes me to 5. And what the last one does is it switches the order. So I need to look at my f of x first. So what is f of negative 1? Negative 1 goes to negative 4. And now I'm going to look at g. What is g of negative 4? 8. So you have to look at the inside function first to get to the outside. So we're going to do the same thing with a graph. We just need to think a little bit differently when we're doing it. So <clears throat> what am I going to look at first here? And I'll use the colors that they have on here. So G they're using is blue. So I want to do G of 2. So that means I go on my graph to 2 on G of X. And what is that Y value? That Y value is negative 2. So now I go to F. And I say, what is f of negative 2? f of negative 2 equals negative 4. The other one, we're going to reverse it. So first, I need to find what is f of negative 5. f of negative 5 is positive 5. So g of 5. And now I look on g at 5, and g of 5 is 1. And last, we're going to look at equations and substituting in for equations. So g of 2, I'm just going to color code these. So I'm going to do f is red and g is blue. So the inside function is the blue. So I need to find g of 2. So 3 times 2 squared minus 2. 
2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 minus 2 is 10. And then I'm going to substitute 10 into f. So I have negative 2 times 10 plus 1, which gives me negative 20 plus 1, negative 19. Now going the other way, I need to find f of 3 first. So f of negative 3, negative 2 times negative 3 plus 1, so that would be 6 plus 1, which is 7. And now we're going to substitute that into g of x. So 3 times 7 squared minus 7. So 49 times 3. So that's going to give me 140. I need you to do the next two problems that say you try. Now we've changed to where we're not evaluating for a number, we're just looking for the function. And what's really important for these is that we consider when we're doing the functions that we look at the domains. So what we want to do is look at the domains that you start with and the domains that you end with. So what is my domain for f of x? We have all real numbers, which looks like a capital R with two lines, and all real numbers. What are the things you need to watch out for if you want to watch a or put a little note to yourself. You want to watch out for square roots and you want to watch out for an x that's in the denominator. Those are the two things we're looking for. Because what can I do square roots of over real numbers? Anything that's greater than or equal to zero. So anything under a square root needs to be greater than or equal to zero. And I can't have a fraction with the denominator equal to zero. So those are my two things I need to pay attention to. Pretty much everything else is all real numbers. So this one I'm not going to be too worried uh, when I'm doing composition. So, also, I'm going to color code like I did before, and G. So this one, I want to plug G of X in to my outside function, which is F. So what I'm going to do is write F of X, my outside function, but wherever I see an X, I am going to leave parentheses. I'm starting my outside function, once again, is F of X, and wherever I see and x in that equation, I'm going to put parentheses. And then I'm going to substitute in what g of x was, which was 4x minus 2, wherever I see it. And we're actually not going to simplify that any farther. It's going to just be a really long kind of simplification process. We can leave it right there. If you feel so inclined, just make sure you don't kill any puppies and that you use the box to multiply that out. All right. So now we're going to go the other way. So my outside function is g, and my inside function is f of x. So I'm going to write the overall, I just call it the structure of my outside function. So 4 parentheses minus 2. And then I plug in my other function, x squared minus 2x plus 3. All right, and once again, you don't have to um, distribute and combine like terms, although the one on the right is a lot happier. So the bottom says is f of g of x equal to g of f of x. And hopefully you can look and kind of picture that at the very least they're not going to be the same. Um, and you could just check 4 times x squared is going to give me a 4x squared. And when I um, multiply 4x and I square that whole thing, it would be 16x squared. So just by that fact that my squared terms are not matching, they are not going to be equal. Don't stress about that one. All right, so let's look at, though, when I do have domain issues. So the left problem I have is all real numbers, or negative infinity, positive infinity. And the right one, though, what are my x values that I could have? I need my x's to be greater than or equal to negative 2. You can either just kind of think about that, or what we're really saying is that x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0, and we are solving that. So x needs to be greater than or equal to negative 2. And at the end, we'll write stuff in interval notation, but for now, this is good enough. So I need to keep that in mind. So when I am writing my f of g of x, let's go ahead and put this. I have my outside function this time is f. So I'm squaring something minus 1. 
And I need to pay attention to what I'm plugging in, which is the square root of x plus 2. But with what I was plugging in, does it have a restriction on it? Yes. So my domain has to include that. So my domain has to include what we already said, which is that x is greater than or equal to negative 2. And then we reduce from there. So what happens when I square square root? I just get x plus 2 minus 1, which gives me x plus 1. Which, does that have a square root in the final answer? No. Does it have a fraction in the final answer? No. So if I had waited until this step, I would have said, oh, the domain is negative infinity, positive infinity. But in fact, we have to use that original domain restriction. Okay. So now let's try going the other way, where g is the outside and f is the inside. And remember, this is the other way that they'll write it with the little um, g, o, f, basically. Okay, so my outside function is the square root, and then blah plus 2. And then f of x is, oh, I know I did the wrong colors. You know I can't handle that. All right. So g is on the outside, square root, something plus 2, and we're plugging it in. All right, look at what we have plugged in. Do I have any restrictions on that? No, so no restrictions at that step. And then we're going to simplify a little bit. So square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, think about the types of numbers that I get if I have x squared plus 1. Can I ever get a negative? No. So this is just going to be all real numbers, or negative infinity, positive infinity. Okay, the last weird curveball you could have would be something like this one. What do you notice about g of x? g of x is just equal to a constant. But what's my domain of the first one? All real numbers. Domain of the second one? all real numbers. So in this one, we don't have to worry about any domain issues. Yay. So we have f of x and g of x. So f is something squared minus 2 times something plus 3. And the something I'm plugging in is 8. And we could simplify that since I just have numbers. So I, you can use a calculator. 64 minus 16 plus 3, so 51. And then going the other way, this is funky, right? Because I just have 8. I don't have any, I have nothing here where I can plug in f of x. Because do I have an x here? No. I don't have any x's. So it doesn't matter what I plug into, this is always going to be 8. The end. Amen.